Hi everyone, welcome back to this Boston Lobsters broadcast presented by Northeast Community Bank. Harry Chickma here alongside the head coach of the Lobsters and you do have John Isner back and what an amazing story. He's one of the hottest players in the world, top 10 in the world, beating Roger Federer in Davis Cup, beating Novak Djokovic in the semifinals of Indian Wells. This is one of the greatest stories in American tennis. It's, it's not only one of the greatest stories, but it couldn't be happening to a better kid. Um, I th we've talked in the past about Eric Buderak and how his expectations of going out on the tour and being successful were, were almost non-existent. I wouldn't say John Isner's expectations were non-existent, but I don't think his expectations uh, mirrored where he is today. And so I think he brings with his personality a sense of appreciation for where he is today and a sense of perspective of, of that he's really enjoying it and, and lucky to be there. Uh, having said that, um, he's gotten everything he deserves. One of the things that I talk about all the time uh, to tennis players, people that I'm coaching or when I'm watching someone on the tour is about their movement. And with John, I would suggest that his movement is every good, every bit as good as Roger Federer's. Now, does he move like Federer? No. But for his style of play and for his size, he moves every bit as well as Roger Federer. Um, and the key is really to match your movement to your style of play. And uh, the thing that I love watching about or watching with John is the way he has fit his entire game together um, to become this top 10 player. And a big piece of it is the improvement in his movement. Do you think that John Isner is the best server in the history of tennis? I mean, it's coming down from a tree when he hits that serve. And Novak Djokovic was paralyzed. Federer was paralyzed on clay in Davis Cup. What is it about that serve that makes him so effective? Well. I think there have been some other players, Karlovic as an example, that hit as big a serve. Um, but one of the things that you always coach in serving is that you want to be a pitcher. You want to be able to throw a curveball. You want to be able to throw a slider. You want to be able to throw a fastball. You want to be able to move someone back off the plate. And I think the, the fun thing to watch when watching John play matches is the way he uses different serves. He's got a huge kicker, he's got a fastball, he's got a slider, and he can move people around the box and make that service box so big that he, he diminishes um, a returner's competitive will. Uh, because they just can't get balls back because they're not seeing the same thing all the time. And as soon as you settle in to try to return one of his serves, he throws you something else. So not only does he make the service box bigger, um, he throws all sorts of change of paces at you and never lets you feel comfortable uh, returning the ball. So um, not only does he hit a great ball, but he uses his serve as intelligently as any great server that's ever been in the game. Well, it has been a dream season for this American John Isner. Here's what he has to say about his recent success. Anytime American star John Isner takes the court with the lobsters, it makes headlines throughout the world. At six feet nine inches, he is one of the most feared competitors on the court, and he's currently top ten in the world thanks to impressive wins over Novak Djokovic in the semifinals at Indian Wells and Roger Federer at the Davis Cup. It was, it was a great, it's a great win for me personally, but more importantly, it was a great win for our team. You know, I was playing second that day on Friday, and you know, I think Marty did absolutely, he did a great job taking a lot of pressure off me because, you know, we had the 1-0 lead. Had we been down 0-1, it would have been a little bit of a, of a different dynamic there, but we were up 1-0 going into that match. I knew I really had nothing to lose, but I also knew that, um, you know, that I could beat him, you know, beat Roger on that day, and that's what I did. I went out there and did it. That first, first point is huge. I mean, had we been down 1-0, who knows, maybe Roger's go out there and he doesn't feel as much pressure. So. Um, I think he felt the pressure to, to certainly tie the match up 
for Switzerland because, you know, we were the underdogs. You know, I guess a lot of people expected them to kind of sweep us 3-0, but since we had that 1-0 lead, he might have felt a little bit more pressure. It took pressure off me personally. So I knew at worst, you know, it was going to be 1-1 going, going into the doubles. John's resume also spans well past the tennis courts. He is the only college graduate in the world's top 100, and the University of Georgia Bulldog appreciates the team atmosphere of playing for the Lobsters in Boston and for Team USA in the Davis Cup. You know, I played college tennis, so it's kind of a similar, but obviously Davis Cup is, is a bigger stage, but you know, in college tennis, when you play in a, in a way match, you know, there'd be 500 people, you know, wanting us to lose. You know, and all we have is just our team cheering us on. So it's very similar in Davis Cup. You know, so like I said, it was a bigger stage. It was about 7,500 people um, cheering for the Swiss, but we had a small contingent of U.S. fans. Obviously, our, you know, our teammates, my teammates, our coach, and, you know, the whole staff there, you know, friends and family at top and the Grand Slam Tennis Tour guys. Uh, it was, um, you know, it was, it, it's, it's fun to be able to, you know, play for your country out there and to be able to do it and have those guys cheer you on. One of Isner's great accolades is winning the longest tennis match of all time when he beat Nicholas Mahout in over 11 hours and 5 minutes in Wimbledon, 70 to 68 in the fifth set. He also has a very rigorous travel schedule, so he paces himself for the WTT season. You have to try to rest as much as possible. You know, listen to your body, take care of yourself. If you know, if that means you know not practicing that extra hour just because you're tired, then you need to do so because traveling is so much. It's, it's a lot of wear and tear on the body. Um, so I think most importantly, it's just getting a lot of rest and getting a lot of sleep and just trying to feel as healthy as possible. There's no question Isner's celebrity status and unprecedented work ethic will make a major statement for the Lobsters and their title hopes. Well, it's so great to see John Isner playing well, and it's even greater that he's playing for the Lobsters because you have one of the best players in the world. Uh, unquestionably one of the best players in the world. To have that level of tennis come to the Boston Lobsters is going to be unbelievable for the fans, unbelievable for our team, and unbelievable for our results. Uh, every coach's dream is to have the best players. And uh, to have someone show up on our doorstep like that is, is, is going to be a great experience for everyone, and, and particularly me as the coach. And you played college tennis. Eric Buderak played college tennis. John Isner played for the University of Georgia. What does that say about American tennis and how that can help players do well on the tour, which is a misconception. Many people think you can't go to college and do well. You have a number of guys on your roster who prove that wrong. Well, I, I think it adds a little perspective. I think uh, people that have gone through the college experience may have had some other life experiences that they can then bring to the tour as an asset. Um, he, he has a sense of community around his tennis that uh, the foundation of which was built at Georgia um, and continues today. And I, I think it allows players to come and feel a little more at peace with who they are because they've had time to develop that side of their life um, with why they're out there and to have a little perspective um, and appreciation for what they're experiencing because it's been quite honestly a little bit of a longer road to get there. And for someone like John Isner, who is one of the best players in the world right now, playing so well, beating Roger Federer, what do you tell him as a coach? I and mean, what can you possibly tell him to help his game? You know, there's a great uh, Jerry Tarkanian uh, uh, quote where I come to the practices and I roll out the balls and I let them play. Um, he, he said that back when he had five of his starters go into the NBA the next year. With John, I'm going to try to stay out of the way. Um, what I will do is make sure that he's able to um, integrate into the team and inspire the rest of our players to play their best tennis as well. Um, you know, sometimes when a guy like that shows up, everyone's a little on a little bit on pins and needles, and um, they need to go into the matches with John. That look, he's our teammate. He's just another guy on our team, and and be inspired to play their best tennis. But other than that, I'm rolling the balls out and just letting them play. And when he beat Federer, he went big serve, big forehand, 
and he's not afraid to come to the net on any surface. So he took what he does well, didn't change it a whole lot, changed it a little bit on the clay, and just brought it. And, and I think if you don't try to change dramatically, you're going to play well on any surface. Well, definitely will be exciting at the Ferncroft Country Club this year with John Isner suiting up for the Lobsters. And there's much more coming up on this Boston Lobsters broadcast presented by Northeast Community Bank. We'll be right back after these brief messages. Hi everyone and greetings from Danvers, Massachusetts. Harry Chickma here with Ken Martinek, the President, Chairman and CEO of Northeast Community Bank. A wonderful atmosphere here. You've been here for 37 years. Ken, talk about uh, what this bank represents. Well, it's, it's really, truly a community bank. We don't um, compare ourselves to anyone else, or large or small. We're involved in our communities. We typically do not advertise heavily. The Lobsters is a, a unique situation. Normally what we do is we take our advertising dollars and put it back into the community as donations to organizations like the Family Festival, the Historical Society, uh, things like that. It, it uh, doesn't have the rapid impact of an advertisement in the newspaper, but over time the people in the community realize that we're here really to help support the community, help the community grow. Um, one, of our, one of our mantras is uh, uh, helping our customers and our communities prosper, because when they prosper, so do we. And how rewarding is that for you to be part of a bank that does that, which is kind of uncharacteristic of many banks? It is uncharacteristic, and it's absolutely great. I, well, I learned a long time ago. I've been here, like as you say, 37 years. One of the first things I learned from my grandfather was you hire happy people, and you can train them to do pretty much anything. You hire someone who's an expert but with grumpy genes, and what you, what you get is somebody who's grumpy and does not enjoy what they do. Everyone in this building absolutely loves what they do. What are some of the other initiatives of the bank right now going on? Well, we're opening offices in Framingham and Quincy. We're opening a second office in Plymouth. Um, of course, we have two offices here, the Lending Center and the, the Retail Branch. Um, exciting thing right now is we're, uh, we're um, doing a construction loan for the Parents Nursery School to build them a new, a new school. Well, Ken Martin, congratulations on everything here, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Harry Chickman here with Ken Martinek, the President, Chairman, and CEO of Northeast Community Bank.